targeted mercenary spyware. Think Pegasus NSO group, nation states. Turns out WWDC 2022 wasn't the last word on iOS 16, iPad OS 16, and Mac OS Ventura features. That's right, Apple has one more thing. It's called Lockdown. And like the name suggests, it lets you put your iPhone, iPad, or Mac into an even more highly secured state than how it comes just fresh out of the box. And I'll get to how lockdown works in a second, but it'll be available to test in the next betas and should ship as part of the full release this fall. There's no word on watchOS or tvOS yet, but a quick look at the feature sets and APIs for those products will tell you that their attack surfaces are already just way, 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 way smaller than any of Apple's main computing devices. When lockdown ships, Apple will begin informing potential targets about it as part of their ongoing and existing notification system, as well as working with groups that help educate high-risk individuals like journalists, dissidents, and people in government so they'll know it's available to them when and if they really truly need it. Now, there is a cost to lockdown, a price to be paid for that extra hardened, full-on force field level of security, and it's in, you guessed it, convenience. Turning lockdown mode on is entirely optional, but the moment you do, you turn off a bunch of other very specific features, the ones most frequently, most commonly abused as attack surfaces. And that includes an even more restricted form of USB restricted mode, which is designed to prevent accessory based attacks like juice jacking. Configuration profiles and MDM enrollment are also locked down. Existing ones will remain and work as expected, but you can't enable any new ones or be socially engineered into installing any new ones. For messages, including iMessage, SMS, and MMS, Lockdown reduces the feature set to only the simplest, most common hardened file types like JPEG, PNG, GIFGIF, TIFF, and WebP, and turns off even newer, more complex functionality like editing, deleting, and share play. Also, under Lockdown, everyone is basically disallowed from contacting you unless you contact them first, and that's on a per service basis. So unless you FaceTime someone, they can't FaceTime you. And if you FaceTime them, they're only allowed to FaceTime you for as long as the connection stays active. If 30 days ever pass between FaceTimes, they're disallowed again unless and until you re-engage. Same with share requests from other Apple services and existing shared photo albums just go bye-bye and new requests are blocked. But the biggest lockdown is for web technologies, which is also typically the biggest attack surface. And that includes Safari, but also the frameworks used by other iOS and iPadOS browsers, and even the web views that are embedded in a wide array of other apps, including and especially social apps. Specifically, lockdown disables the JIT, or just-in-time pipelines, and some caching in WebKit. Also, no generational or concurrent garbage collection, as well as a dynamic code signing entitlement, web native fonts, all but the most popular and widely scrutinized image formats, all but a tiny handful of video and audio containers, codecs, and caption types, inline PDF rendering. Yes, you'll have to download your docs and read them locally in lockdown mode. Also, no more automatic URL delegations either, so a link can't just kick you into another app automatically anymore, not unless you okay it first at least. And say goodbye to quick look previews and to a lot of the heavier, more complex web APIs as well. Things like WebGL and WebRTC. Now, if your immediate reaction to any or all of this is that it'll just make the web utterly useless, unusable to you, well, Apple's thought of that as well. See, you can opt out of lockdown on a per site basis. So if there are any websites that you absolutely trust and absolutely need to use, you can go ahead and allow them to work as normal as if lockdown isn't in effect but everything else will still be locked down. And Apple will be providing an API so other iOS browser developers can implement that feature as well, which is terrific because under the terrible, terrible circumstances that I would ever have to turn lockdown on myself personally, I don't wanna be stuck doom scrolling Twitter rather than smart scrolling Morning Brew, today's sponsor, which each day, every day, 
for free gives me everything I really need to know in just five minutes. It's always there the instant I wake up, ready to read, with impeccable curation, snappy, informative, always relevant, often irreverent prose, 100% completely free, seven days a week. And by clicking the link in the description, you can enjoy it in your inbox as well. Everything from a quick market recap to the top stories of the day, like how the FCC commissioner is asking Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their platforms. Also, how Air New Zealand is putting bunk beds in the sky, which <laughs> you've just got to read. It's morning brew. It's free. It takes all of 15 seconds to subscribe, and it starts your day off smart. So just hit the button on the screen or click the link in the description, and you'll not only get a free newsletter you'll actually read, but one that you will consistently enjoy. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel, and so does hitting up this playlist for way more on everything that's coming our way this fall. Just hit up that playlist, and I'll see you in the next video.